What's up guys, Charon here with Rise Magic. Let me tell you, it has been an absolutely insane past week for me. Past seven days have been mind blowing. I'll get into why in a second, but that's why I figure for this week's video, we haven't done a Q and A in over a year. Now it'd be a good time to pop in and answer some of your questions. So let's get started. I put out one of those Q and A things on Instagram. So if you want to get your questions featured, be sure to follow us on Instagram because that's where I pulled all of these from. First question is from Whitney. She says, who is Whitney? Well, that's actually why the past week has been so insane. You see this past weekend, I was down in Florida for a business trip, but I also flew Whitney down to Florida with me and proposed to her. So now Whitney is my fiance. I was able to pull off the whole thing as complete surprise to her. I even had my friend Nick Stumphauser, who works with the Orbit crew, film an incredible surprise engagement video and take great pictures. I edited the footage just recently and posted it on my personal YouTube channel. I would love it if you guys went and watched the whole thing. I love the music I picked for it. One of my favorite videos I've ever made. So I'll link that in the description, but obviously I got some B-roll playing over the top. I love you, Whitney, and all our personal relationship aside, just for you guys out there, Rise Magic would not be the channel that is today without Whitney's influence in my life and her help. So I had to make sure I locked in that relationship permanently. Related to that, King Liam Taylor asks, also, how did you meet Whitney? Well, I met Whitney about eight years ago at a summer camp we both went to. We met by pure chance at this camp. It's a place that I went every single summer, one of my favorite places in the world, so it was awesome that I got to meet my future wife at one of my favorite places in the world. We actually knew each other a full five years before we even started dating, so we were definitely best friends before a relationship even started, which obviously from my biased perspective, probably the best way to do it. Tobias Freake, 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 what was your guys' first flourish you really honed in on? Well, for me, it was definitely the civil cut. That was the first two-handed cut that really felt like I was doing cardistry. Like I obviously could do thumb fans, pressure fans, Charlier cuts, one-handed cuts. But once I got down the five packet civil cut, by the way, if you don't know how to do it, we have a tutorial on our channel. I'll link that in the description. Once I really got going and doing that fast, I really felt like a cardist. Let me see if I can do it right now. So I learned the four packet civil first, right? And then I graduated to the five packet civil and I guarantee you, when I was really working it, I could probably do it a lot faster than that. But hey, speed isn't really the point. It's all about smoothness. What is your guys' favorite memory doing magic together? Asks Lane.4532. I can't speak for Grant here, but for me, performing magic with Grant, for some reason still, Philadelphia reacts to street magic is still a day that really sticks out in my mind because that was really our first time going and making a YouTube video together. And obviously Grant and I did go perform magic as a working magicians before we ever started a YouTube channel, but that video is what kicked off all of YouTube. So that's definitely my favorite memory performing magic because of what it led to. There were also some great reactions and we did get to perform for some really big crowds that day. So it's a good time. Introverted Cardist asks, how much do you practice nowadays and do you learn new moves slash tricks or maintain at the moment? Well, it's kind of complicated. I do practice every single day. In fact, my full-time job is editing videos, whether it's for my job or for YouTube, right? So lots of times you would think this is like a set that I got all looking nice for this video, but no, I just set up the camera and this was me actually editing the engagement video that I was just talking about. So normally sitting at my desk, I have a deck of cards right here, Rise Playing Cards. And when I'm editing and when I'm doing content and making stuff like that for work, whenever the video is rendering or I can't think about what to put next in the video, I am constantly shuffling cards and doing cardistry. So I don't know if that's necessarily practice, but I am doing it every single day. It's not like dedicated practice where it's the only thing I'm focused on, but I've never really done that with cardistry. Maybe with magic tricks sometimes. Mo77i5 asks, what was your favorite childhood toy? Why, and do you still have it? Well, my favorite childhood toys were Legos and off of Legos was Bionicles, which is kind of like a subset of Legos. I absolutely loved that stuff growing up. I love the engineering behind it, the building, not only building up based off the instructions that you got in the little boxes, but then taking together all your pieces and building something on your own with your own creativity was something that we loved doing. There was a Lego magazine 
and myself, Grant, and our older brother, Philip, we would always try and build cool creations to get featured in the Lego magazine back in the day. It is definitely by far and away our most favorite toy as a child. So much so that for Christmas, Grant actually bought me a Mandalorian Lego set that we actually unboxed on our live stream. And we live stream every Monday and Thursday, if you don't know, all right? But it was a really cool Lego set, so thank you, Grant. Mr. Jake Mayfield asks, how long have you been planning to propose? Well, Whitney and I have been friends for so long before we started dating that I kind of knew that if we started dating, we were gonna get married, just kind of knew. So pretty much our entire relationship, which is about three and a half years at this point. Ben Cedarleaf asks, can both of you guys still dunk? Ben. Don't make me ever get this close to the camera again, Ben. Of course I can still dunk. It's a stupid question. I'm watching you, Ben. <laughs> Austin 100S asks, time for some tea. Least favorite cardistry deck. I'm not gonna fall into your trap, Austin. I got enough drama in my life. I'm not answering this question. That will, that just, that just won't end well. I definitely do have one or a couple, but I'm not answering this question. However, you've heard me talk about lazy designs in the past and designs that make no sense and people who just slap stuff on there and toss it out probably made them, probably took them five seconds to make the deck just because they have a brand and think that whatever they put out, people will buy. It's true, but you can still put effort and respect your consumers I'm not going to name any names though. CPT Crumb, I ask, when will we see another Rise podcast? I don't know, maybe someday. I did really enjoy doing the Rise podcast, but I feel like live streaming has really replaced that because now we get to just talk and chill while live interacting with you guys. So I personally like it better than podcasting because there's not as much pressure. Oh my gosh, what do we talk about? Because we get to talk with you guys, but let me know what you think. Jordan Baldwin asks, most points you've scored in a basketball game? Well, it depends on which level. High school, I think it was 32 or 33. So that's like regulation when you have, you know, it's very serious. And for like college intramurals, one time I had a 48 point triple double and we won a game playing four on five, but that's intramural, so it doesn't really count, but it was still fun. Absolute domination. OVS Spades asks, has anything made you guys think of quitting YouTube? Honestly, no, I'm not a quitter. I can't really think of anything that would overtly make me quit. But I will tell you guys a little inside scoop, something that bothers me and does get me frustrated at times is the way YouTube treats its algorithm when it comes to titles and thumbnails. I'm a very minimalist person. I like things to look clean and crisp and high quality. And that's what I try and make our videos like. But in order to make people watch our videos, I unfortunately have to make thumbnails and titles that work with YouTube's algorithm, which is why you get stuff like most insane, OMG, titles with all the exclamation points and all caps and stuff like that. I know you guys know it, what really matters is the content of the video and the title and thumbnail is just a necessary evil, but I really wish I didn't have to do like the big flashy, gaudy, like in your face thumbnails, but it seems like that's kind of the only stuff that works on YouTube, which is frustrating, but it wouldn't make me quit. Strahinja Tordovic asks, can you give us any hints for Rise playing cards V2? Let me think of something clever real quick that is really ominous and doesn't really give you any hint whatsoever, but you can still try and dissect it. I got one. I'm going to put it in editing. Ready? All right. Charles Wright 38 asks, how many ounces is the big jug? I'm assuming you're talking about this, which actually was not purposefully in frame. Hmm. Wake back up. No time for rest. I don't know, but it's a gallon and I have it twice a day. So Alexa, how many ounces are in a gallon? One gallon is 128 fluid ounces. 128 fluid ounces is in that jug. Have it twice a day. It's a lot of water, but I'm a big guy. Electric Hornet official asks, how do you handle your YouTube content and your job simultaneously? Workflow. I've mentioned it a few times in this video, but I don't know if all you guys know out there. I have a full-time job outside of Rise Magic and outside of YouTube completely. I work as a professional filmmaker for professional athletes and I get to travel the world. It's one of the most insanely cool jobs and I'm thankful for it. Each and every day I get to do it. But 
it does make me very busy. And then obviously with YouTube, we haven't missed a weekly upload in way over three years at this point. So I'm a pretty busy guy juggling all those things. So I'm glad you have some questions about our electric horn official because man, so do I sometimes it feels like a lot. But this is how I break it down. You got to be ridiculously organized. And like you said, have a workflow. So for me, between like working hours, so that's the nine to five classic workday, I'm working 100% on my full time job, I don't touch rise stuff during that time, I don't open DMs, I don't respond to emails. But after the work day is over, and I've done all my stuff for that job, that's when I kind of chill, relax, and then work on rise stuff as a hobby, because it's not something that I want to hate doing, right? I, I love rise magic, and I like making content for it. So I try and be more relaxed with how I work on rise stuff, while still having a plan and a workflow to make sure that those weekly episodes are out no matter what. Now live streaming has been interesting, make sure I do those outside of the workday too. And that's another layer. But the good thing about live streaming is that I don't have to edit it after the fact. It's just edited live. So there's no post filming workflow for that. So I wish I could show you my organization to do list, but I would like expose a lot of stuff that I'm working on for people. So I'll hold it out of focus way over here. Basically, you can see I got a ton of stuff on there. But I separate for work, rise magic and personal. So I have those three aspects of my life rise, work and personal. And then I take a post it note. And I take the priority list for those and put on the post it note and make it a daily to do list. So I stay busy, but I make it work and I love doing it. Oh, and that was the last question. Well, Thank you guys for tuning into this Q&A. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love just interacting with you guys. And if you want to interact more tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is Rise Game Night. We're returning after a full week, full 10 day break. So I had to go to Florida and go, you know, propose to Whitney, get engaged, all that stuff. Be sure to watch the video, like I said earlier. But come on, hang out tonight. Rise Game Night right here on YouTube. You don't have to go to Twitch or anything right here on YouTube. The stream link should be live very, very soon, and it will go live at 8 p.m. If you haven't been there yet, we do giveaways on every single stream, so you can win a deck by playing fun games with us on the stream. So I hope to see you there. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and thanks for all the love about the engagement. Haven't been able to get back to all your DMs, but I will soon. All right, love you guys. Peace out.